12, it's 11 o'clock. <clears throat> so last week we left off with the letters from October of 1967. Prabhupada sent four letters to Brahmananda in that month. And Brahmananda's primary service was to help with Prabhupada's permanent visa, not a tourist visa, to come back to America and to arrange for the Bhagavad Gita, to get the contract signed and get it printed. Prabhupada was very impatient to get a book out. As I explained, when Prabhupada was in India from 1962 to 65, he published four books the Srimad Bhagavatam in three volumes and Easy Journey to Other Planets which he wrote after the Sputnik went up in the air. In 1959 he wrote Easy Journey to Other Planets. So he published four books but here he's in America for two years and not one book. Only Back to Godhead and some essays but no book. So Prabhupada was impatient and we had already met with um, the uh, Macmillan representatives, Bra Brahmananda met with them in uh, 1966. So here it is in the uh, autumn of 67 and it's still not published. And it actually didn't get in our hands until the next year, 68, of winter time. So it took two years of bureaucracy to get the Bhagavad Gita published because it had to be approved by different departments. Someone had to go through. Plus, we had to rewrite the whole thing because it was 800 pages. And Macmillan didn't want to print 800 pages in a paperback or a hardbound. They wanted to print only 250 pages, less than 300 pages. So we had to condense it, and that took time. So anyway, we left with the letter that Prabhupada was going to. Actually, it was um, Brahmananda was responsible for most of the publishing then. These are the actually uh, books that Brahmananda was responsible for publishing. The Bhagavad Gita was the first book and at the same time as Bhagavad Gita, Brahmananda arranged for the teachings of Lord Chaitanya which is this one here. It was Brahmananda who chose the cover. And Prabhupada said, you chose the right cover. But Brahmananda chose the cover for the book. And it was me and Brahmananda who paid for it. Brahmananda got an insurance payout and I cashed in my bar mitzvah bonds. $1,500 and Brahmananda gave $3,500 and someone else gave $500. It cost $6,000 to print the TLC in Japan with Dainapan. So that came out in 1968. So in, in, the, in one year, two books came out, all at the same time in the winter of 68. Then later on, this was the Krishna Conscious Handbook. This came out in 1970. This was given to every new uh, person who lived in the temple of all over ISKCON. It was called the Krishna Conscious Handbook. And it gave all the information, the prayers, how to do everything, how to offer food, how to say this prayer and that prayer, the Tulsi Maharani prayer, this. Everything. It was called the Krishna Conscious Handbook. And every person who lived in the ashram was given this book. 
So Bernard Menander printed that in 1969. Then he printed uh, Sri Upanishad, then Nectar of Devotion. He got the record uh, published in 1966. And then he was responsible for getting the Krishna book published. He actually went to Japan because Prabhupada wanted this book to be ready by Rathiatra of 1970. So it was three weeks before Rathiatra and no Krishna book. So Brahmananda flew to Japan and was actually going to the printing factory and making sure it was done. But, Brah but Brahmananda couldn't get it done. And he had to fly back to America without any Krishna book. And he was thinking, I have to face my guru and tell him there's no Krishna book. My spiritual life is ruined. That's what he was thinking. Because he couldn't fulfill the desires of his spiritual master. So they closed the uh, door of the airplane and then all of a sudden, there was a commotion in front, in front of the uh, plane, inside the plane. And they opened up again the airplane, and two executives, they came in a limousine to the plane and to bring one box of Krishna books for Brahmananda <laughs> so he could bring it back to Prabhupada just at the moment that the plane was leaving. So that was, a, they came to the plane. They came onto the tarmac with a limousine. They drove up right to the plane to bring the box, which was 20 books. And Brahmana was able to sell one Krishna book to the person sitting next to him. So Brahmana felt so relieved because he felt his spiritual life was again kindled. Because <laughs> if he didn't bring back a Christian book, this would be very bad. And Prabhupada, these, there were 19 books left and they were all distributed for uh, Rathiatra. Even Prabhupada's personal copy, he gave it for distribution. So that was a nice leela. So we're going to start with the November, uh-oh, how do I find my thing now? I can't find my pen drive. I can't find the pen drive. This one. Oh, that one. Okay. Okay. So 
So we're on November. The first letter was on November 2nd of 1967. It's a very short letter. Please, ex my dear Ramananda, please accept my blessings. Now I understand that I may return with my visitor's visa, which can be altered once I'm in the USA. If Macmillan is silent, then immediately send me the correspondence which Dwarkadish had with the Japanese printers. Most probably I shall stop in Tokyo and hand over the printing to them. Hope you are well. Macmillan wanted to print it, but it had to go through the bureaucracy. Everybody had to sign the contract, you know, from different departments. Different uh, editors had to read over the whole manuscript to make sure it's, it's a book they wanted to publish because they were the biggest publishers in the world at the time. And this is for the Oriental catalog. You know, they had many Oriental books in that catalog. The next letter, um, at that time, November 4th, Prabhupada wrote to Makunda, my dear Makunda, please accept my blessings. I have due receipt of your letter dated October 22nd, and I've noted the contents. I'm much obliged to you for sending me the record player. You remember Prabhupada was sleeping in his room in India, and someone tippy-toed inside the room and stole the record player while Prabhupada was resting that he had brought from America. And he used that record player because it was portable. It, 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 it played the record that Prabhupada brought with him from New York. And so Mukunda sent another one by air to Prabhupada. I am obliged to you for sending me the record player, which is essential, but I could save the customs duty of 120 rupees if you could have sent a note stating that it was an unsolicited gift. In India, if you receive something from foreigners, say, for personal use only, they don't charge you duty. They don't charge you a tax. So it's 120 rupees. At that time, it was about six rupees to a dollar. So that, that was like dollars. That was a lot of money in those days. Prabhupada had to pay tax. Anyway, the machine was received intact, and I am enjoying it. But I have not heard anything definitely whether I shall wait for the final disposal of your visa application or if I may start immediately. Prabhupada also had Mukunda working on the visa. He didn't want to come back on a, on a tourist visa because a tourist visa, you couldn't, st you had problems. You had to keep ex extending it. And then ultimately you had to leave. And Prabhupada didn't want to leave. He wanted a residential visa. But he thought we could do that. But actually it had nothing to do with us. It had to do uh, with the State Department, you know, agreeing to that. So we sent letters from each temple that we require his presence because he's a minister of religion. So that helped. As you may, as you say, my absence is being felt now more deeply than ever. So I also feel to start immediately without waiting. The morning prayer can be courted when I return. Prabhupada instituted the morning prayer, the morning Hare Krishna. There was a certain tune, it goes like this, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That was the morning tune. We sang uh, only two tunes that Prabhupada taught us, the evening tune and the morning tune. So he had the morning tune. Now I had a, uh, this confirms how Prabhupada, Prabhupada used these 
tunes not by his own brain. These were disciplic succession tunes. How do I know? I spent three days at the Allahabad Gaudiya Math. I was there because I wanted to see, because Prabhupada helped start that temple back in the 1930s. When he, he lived there for 13 years, he had a shop there, and he was uh, making his own medicine, Ayurvedic medicines. So I, I stayed there for three days, and I noticed they sang that morning tune in the morning, and they sang the evening tune, which you just heard the record, that was the evening tune. And they sang the same tunes. I said, where, I asked, I had Brahma to try, where, where did you learn those tunes? Because we sing the same tunes in New York. He said, oh, these were introduced by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. So just see, Prabhupada's ego, he didn't even form his own tunes. He followed the disciplic succession even in the tunes of the Hare Krishna mantra. Whereas we, we like to invent our own tunes and get the, you know, the applause. Oh, he introduced a new tune. The Prabhupada wasn't like that. He followed the disciplic succession tunes. Just see. There's no one like Prabhupada. As you say, uh, if there's actually a brahmachari ashrama organized by San Francisco devotees, it would be very nice to keep their Jodharani as the leader of the brahmacharinis. I am very glad that the other devotees are waiting for me. Hope you are well. So at the same time, Prabhupada wrote to Ray Rama also. In replying to your letter of October 21, I offer to you my sincere blessings for the most kind words that you have sent me as a sincere devotee. This attitude of service will make you progress in Krishna consciousness and perfect Krishna consciousness will help you, will help us to go back home, back to Godhead. I have already sent you my congratulations for improving the get up of back to Godhead. And I'm sending news to Gaur Shunda for his wonderful service to this cause. Because he did a lot of the artwork in the early days for Back to Godhead. I have received one letter from Hari Griva expressing his sorrow about Kirtanananda's plight in relation with his god brothers. He has complained that some of the boys had spit upon him, but the... Uh, his, Kirtananda's body and his fact is the most regrettable incident. The fact is that once, com, um, once combined in Krishna consciousness, one cannot be separated at any time. But the innocent, the incident of separation from the society of Kirtananda and Hari Griva is accidental. I had advised that Kirtananda should be asked not to speak, but I never asked that he should be uh, not enter the temple. We invite outsiders to come and hear our kirtans, but I think Kirtananda might have been disturbing the peace of the temple, and therefore you all asked him not to enter the temple. I do not know what actually it transpired, but the incident is not very happy. If possible, the boy who had spit upon Kirtananda in the presence of Hari Griva must be requested to send a letter of regret and apology for the mistake he has done. That was me. I did it. Because he kept saying that Prabhupada's going to die and he's not coming back. And Prabhupada's writing us a letter that he is coming back. So we were all confused. And why is he saying Prabhupada's going to die and we have to listen to him. Right. He's the next Acharya. Yeah. Practically, he was saying. So I got very disturbed. I said, you nonsense. Poof. I did it. And I wasn't sorry. And I'll do it again to, to offend my spiritual master against people who are speaking against him and saying lies. Mm. 
I have already given you a list of good behavior for the devotees. That's the 26 qualifications of a devotee, which Prabhupada, he did it very secretly. He pasted it on the door of the temple, the 26 qualifications of devotees, which we didn't even know before initiation. It was after initiation. We had all these rules and regulations, the 10 offenses. We didn't know that when we got initiated. The 10 offenses and the uh, offenses to the holy name. We didn't know any of these things before we got initiated. And when we saw all these new regulations, we said, oh, we're way beyond, far, far away from all these things. Because, you know, we're just getting purified by following the four regulator principles. The person who is a devotee must develop those good qualities. Kirtan has attempted to defy me, might have provoked all these undesirable incidents, but in the future we shall be very much careful to deal in such provocative situations. So Prabhupada understood what happened. I can understand the provocation in this situation was set in motion by Kirtananda's uncalled for behavior. Hope you are well. Then on, uh, one day later, he writes a letter again to Brahmananda on November 5th. My dear Brahmananda, please accept my blessings. Reply your letter of October 21. I quite appreciate your statement. I'm happy that you have now taken care of the, of the Gita manuscript. I have already written to Hari Griva that the instruction which I impart are not dogmas, but instructions, and are all based on sufficient logic and philosophy. Excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom. I have a problem. I'm going to put uh, the CBS News. <laughs> this came in 1966, except it's not playing. There it goes. Oh, this is I'm Collins. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. A hypnotic rhythmic chant of 16 words has replaced LSD and other drugs for some in New York's East Village. On 2nd Avenue and 1st Street is a storefront in which a Hindu Swami has set up shop. There, his American disciples are learning about Krishna consciousness.
the the beautiful things and ugly things. We have duality. But the chant is to get us out of nature and into Krishna's superior superior universe, which is the spiritual universe. And this is what the chant is really intended to do, is to take you off into eternity. I started chanting in July. I was taking I was still taking LSD at the time. But uh, he was against LSD. He said, uh, I told him, what do you think of my taking LSD for my spiritual, for spiritual realization, expanded consciousness? I was interested in, in staying high forever, as it were, uh, maintaining an awareness of, of the universe that was, was flowing through me and passing me every, every second of my life. He says, oh, he said, that's not necessary. He said, your spiritual life is already here. He said, you don't need to take anything for your spiritual life. And I knew he was right, and he had that exalted state of consciousness. I sensed it, and I knew he didn't take anything, and I knew that I wanted this state of consciousness, that he could teach it to me. Krishna consciousness is a moment-to-moment realization that nothing is yours, either anything you use in this world, or your body, or even your mind. Krishna is our divine father, the one Lord. It doesn't make any difference what you call him, Allah, Muhammad, or uh, Buddha, or Jehovah, Christ. There's only one. Krishna is our father. All things are his. And we have happiness, true happiness, when we use all things for him. Uh, I practice my Krishna consciousness by Brahmananda. chanting uh, when I work. That's Brahmananda. Work. And this is what we ask all good people to try chanting. Try it when you wake up in the morning. Try it on your way to work on the subway. I know I chant every day on the way to work in the subway. Other people are kicking and chopping. I'm chanting and I enjoy my subway ride. This is Satsarup. This is Damodar. This is Jodorani. I'm over here. That's Hari Griva. That's me, dancing. <laughs> I was playing Prabhupada's bongo drum because he got his cartels from India, from Narayan Maharaj. So he started leading Kirtan by using the cartels, not the drum. He stopped using the drum. You could see only about 20 people could fit in that little storefront. That's where I slept with Brahmananda. We were the first to move into the temple, and we slept on the floor there. And now we're going to go uptown to St. Mark's Place to do our kirtan and spread joy and peace to the people of New York. We invite all our friends to join us. We had to be careful going out in the evening because people would pour water on us from, from the tenement buildings. They would pour water. Some would throw plants. But that was done in 1966. So get back letters. Um, here we go. So where are we on the fifth? Yeah. So on the fifth of November, Brahmananda gets a letter from Prabhupada. <clears throat> Prabhupada's in Calcutta. Replying your letter dated October 21st, 
I quite appreciate your statement, and I'm very happy that you have taken care of the Gita manuscript. I have already written to Hari Griva that the instruction which I impart are not dogmas. That's the, some of the poison from Kirtanana that was spreading. Our instructions are all based on the sufficient logic and philosophy. The thing is, is that while conducting missionary activities, it is quite natural that sometimes the situation may become very provocative and we have to deal with these matters very carefully. The boy who spat upon the person of Kirtananda must send a letter of regret and apology. That will be nice. You should always try to pacify the living, uh, the, the living entities in, in their rebellious propensities. These individual pro propensities are factual evidence for their becoming in, individual entities. If everything would have been impersonal, there, there would have been no scope for the individual manifestation. So it is understood that Hari Griva will purchase the property at Wilkes Bar with the help of Dr. Henderson's financial assistance. I do not mind that they do something separately. So this is the beginning of New Brindavan. <coughs> they started New Brindavan. Everybody thinks it was Prabhupada. It wasn't. They started New Vrindavan on their own, and they wanted devotees to come there. But nobody would go there until Prabhupada gave the permission. And he actually didn't go there until 1969 when me and Brahmananda drove him. They didn't have electricity, so Prabhupada didn't like it there because he couldn't translate. <laughs> I, am, I do not mind they will do something separately, but I wish that they may not be any misbehavior between the God brothers. I think you can write Hari Griva a personal letter regretting the incident which had all unfortunately occurred, namely spitting over the person of Kirtananda. Hope you are well. That was, again, that was me. So maybe my brother wrote the letter for me, but I certainly didn't. And I would do it again for the things that he was saying, the poisonous. He was poison. And a lot of devotees were very upset over that. You know, they were new devotees. Some of them even never even met Prabhupada. And he, here he's saying Prabhupada's not coming back, then why should they stay there? Then they would leave. So it was a terrible situation at that time. So the next letter came, uh, there was a letter written on no November 9th to Ray Rama. I'm in due receipt of your letter dated the 28th of October. It is certainly good news that Macmillan may now agree to publish the Gita Upanishad in a soft cover edition and is considering the hardcover very seriously. They did do a hardcover, but of the abridged one. It wasn't the expanded 800-page hardcover. That didn't come until 1972. So they did do a hardcover version of the abridged, 250 pages, was in hardcover for, seven, for $8, and the soft cover was $3. Under, but under any circumstances, the manuscript must be ready. I do not follow you when you write to say that Hari Griva won't deliver the manuscript. This was another problem. Actually, Brahmananda found out that Hari Griva and Kirtananda were trying to get Prabhupada's Gita published in their own names. They were sending it to different publishers saying that this is their book. And this was very disturbing. And that's why Hari Griva was reluctant to give over the manuscript. <clears throat> so it was, this thing was quite a bit disturbing. 
this is the first time and since Prabhupada was there that there were disobedient disciples. This never happened before. So Prabhupada was very concerned about the American psyche. Could he trust us? Because we acted so sincere and then all of a sudden we turn against him. Because Kirtananda was Prabhupada's first personal servant and now he's turning against him. So what did Prabhupada think about the American psyche? How they react, how they act? It didn't go very well. <clears throat> if he does not return it, then how are you going to publish it? And how are you going to edit it? In two previous letters you write that he has already returned it. In letter of 21 you write, Hari Griva has left the manuscript of Gita with me and I'm going to have it typed. There were several copies at that time. In fact, I have a copy. I'll show you what it looked like. This is the original manuscript of Bhagavad Gita. Typed. By Prabhupada. Yeah, by Prabhupada. He would do the first draft and then he would, then it would go to the editors and then it would be retyped after the editors got it. So this is uh, the manuscript after the editors edited it. But this is the original, this is a original page of the Gita Panishad. Mm. I've, I've been work in in the letter of October 25th. You write, I've been working on the manuscript with Hari Griva, which Hari Griva returned to me. In this letter, you wrote to say that he is trying to very smoothly, uh, obviously, punish us by right by not returning the same. The quarrel amongst yourselves, the God brothers, is not very palatable. I am thinking about our society. We were very simply going on, but this disruption created by Kirtananda has plagued and disturbed the situation. It's a plague, Prabhupada used that word. A plague, that's very serious. The best thing is to do our duty nicely with faith in Krishna and everything will be adjusted. You are nicely doing back to Godhead. I mean, just how, think how Prabhupada was thinking. He put all this faith and trust in the disciples to do the publishing, to manage the temple, everything. And here there's a, a, a group of devotees working against what Prabhupada tried to set up the foundation of ISKCON. And they're trying to break down the ISKCON foundation. And what is the foundation of ISKCON? Faith in the spiritual master. And they were trying to break that faith by saying things other than what Prabhupada was saying. That's always been our problem, loss of faith in the spiritual master. The separation of Kirtanan and Hari Griva is not a very happy incident. I was practically in tears. 
Just see, Prabhupada was crying over this situation. We were actually all very upset. I mean, extreme. you have no idea, everybody. And we were new devotees. Some of them never met Prabhupada. I was practically in tears for their attitude of separation on such flimsy grounds. In other words, it is my incapability that I could not save these two souls. Just see, Prabhupada's blaming himself. But this is a great evidence that every soul is individual. The nonsense theory of oneness becomes null and void by the evidence presented in this incident. But we should not be angry with these poor souls. Try to convince them by argument and reason, but do not become angry with them. Lord Nityananda, when he was dealing with Jagai and Madai, maintained the maximum amount of tolerance and patience in spite of the greatest provocation. The two brothers, Jagai and Madai, committed violence on Lord Nityananda. Even Lord Chaitanya, author of Shikshastakam, became agitated. But Lord Nityananda Prabhu, in the matter, remained calm and quiet and delivered the two rascals to the highest elevation. We should always try to represent Lord Nityananda Prabhu in the matter of preaching work. Kirtananda is a crazy man. Prabhupada's saying it right out. He, he was, Prabhupada saved him from the mental hospital. Because before 1966, Kirtananda wanted to get money for Prabhupada to print books. So he thought, I'll go to the mental hospital and act crazy, and they'll give me crazy money. Because in America, you can, it's called SSI or something. You can get crazy money from the government, like $500 a month, if you're crazy, but not so crazy that you would harm someone. But the, when they examined him, they said, you are actually crazy. And they committed him into the hospital. And once you're committed by the state, you can't get out with it unless you have a court order. And Prabhupada uh, arranged through Allen Ginsberg and one uh, congressman from Harlem to help him get out of Bellevue Hospital. And now Prabhupada's telling him he should go back. He needs help. Actually, we're all crazy. That's, that's why we come to Krishna conscious. This is proof. He says that he has become equal to the spiritual master. But he is such a fool that he does not understand the principle of disciple even in ordinary worldly affairs. Even if one becomes equal to the spiritual master in education and knowledge, still one has to maintain the disciplinary principle of obeying one chief man in any establishment. If such disciples is not maintained, no establishment can make any progress. Hope you are well. That's why we were so anxious to get Prabhupada back. Because once he came back, that would nullify everything that Kirtananda was saying. And we were pleading with Prabhupada, please come back, please come back, you see. And he was already better. He said he was 90% better. But what happened, he was ready to come in November, as you will understand. But there was a strike in Calcutta and he couldn't leave. So he had to wait an extra month. He didn't come until late December to San Francisco, where I met him. By November, I was in, uh, in, uh, in San Francisco by November. The next letter came November 11th, 1967. My dear Brahmananda, please accept my blessings. I'm very glad to see your letter dated November 3rd, in which you have sent the good news that Macmillan Co Company has agreed to publish my Gita unedited, what is it, U Upanishad, and 
The contract has been prepared. This service is done by you and is a great asset for our society's future activities. So Prabhupada's giving Brahmananda the credit for getting the Gita done. Now, uh, Prabhupada had to give power of attorney to Brahmananda to sign the contract, which he did, and to receive any royalties from the Gita. It was only a few cents a book that he would get as royalty. I do not, I do not want a crowd of Kirtanandas, but I want a single soul like Ramananda, Mukunda, Re Rama, and Satsarupa. The same example is always applicable. That one moon is sufficient for the night, as not thousands of stars. Please carefully handle the dealings with Macmillan, which was begun by your good self. If publications are there, we can work from one center, only like New York or San Francisco for propagating our cult all over the world. Let us stick to the publication of the BP, BTG, Back to Godhead, more and more nicely and publish some Vedic literatures like Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya, Chaitamrita, etc. I've reached, I've received one telegram from Mukunda uh, reading as follows. Swamiji, Brahmananda agree you start immediately, advise exact arrival date, Mukunda. In reply to this, I may say that I'm expecting my P form uh, sanctioned and most probably I shall be starting sometime next week. If I stop in Tokyo for a day to probe if there's any possibility of starting a center from Tokyo, I shall let Mukunda know by telegram. I'm exactly arriving in San Francisco. From San Francisco, I shall try to go see the two new centers, namely Los Angeles and Santa Fe. These were started uh, while Prabhupada was out of the country. So the movement was expanding, but we were under great attack by these two devotees, well, one devotee, Kirtananda, who was influencing others. So this new Vrindavan was started by Kirtananda, not Prabhupada. And I have proof of it because when Prabhupada did go there, because Malati says I'm wrong, she propagates against my book because in my book I mentioned that new Vrindavan was started by Kirtananda and Hargriva, not Prabhupada. But when Prabhupada went there, he called new Vrindavan your new Vrindavan. He never, never said, my new Vrindavan. And in Back to Godhead in 1969, they published a whole article about new Vrindavan with photos, and it clearly says the founders of new Vrindavan, Kirtananda and Hari Griva. It doesn't say Prabhupada. And that's in Back to Godhead. So that's proof. I have read your statements regarding opening centers. I am not in agreement with Mr. Ullman that we are expanding very thinly. In my opinion, a sincere soul can maintain a center. You know I started that center at 26 Second Avenue and I was alone. I t took the risk of $200 per month for the rent. At that time, there were no assistants. Mukunda was at that time a friend but there was no responsibility for his maintaining the center. Actually, Kirtanan and Hari Griva joined, but they also did not take any responsibility. Still, I was maintaining the establishment simply by depending on Krishna, and then Krishna sent me everything, men and money. Similarly, if a sincere soul goes out and opens a center in any part of the world, Krishna will help him in all respects. Without being empowered by Krishna, nobody can preach the Krishna consciousness. It is not an academic qualification or financial strength, or strength which helps in these matters, but is sincerity of purpose which helps us always. Therefore, I wish that you all remain in charge of New York. Let Satsarupi in charge of Boston. 
Makunda in charge of San Francisco, Jana Darn in Montreal, let Nandarani and Dianana be in charge of Los Angeles, and let Subal be in charge of Santa Fe. In this way, we will follow my example as I prepared to chant, if there is no man to hear me, the principle of chanting is to glorify the Lord and not to attract a crowd. If Krishna hears nicely, then, we, then he will ask some sincere devotee to gather in such place. Therefore, be advised that thousands of centers may be started if we find out a sincere soul for each and every center. We do not require our men to start. If there is one sincere soul, that is sufficient to start a new center. With this expectation, I wanted to send Kirtananda to London, and he has proved himself unworthy. When I arrive in your state, I may ask Rama to go to London and your good self to go to Russia <laughs> and Gargamuni to Holland. The incident created by Kirtananda and Hari Griva may not disappoint us in the least. Let us remain sincere to Krishna and in his bona fide representative we are uh, sure to carry out the mission successfully. Hope you are well. Whew, what a letter. So much instruction. Have faith in the spiritual master that anyone could start a center by himself. And we did that. I started Gainesville all by myself without one penny. I, I was sleeping in the pews of a, of a church because they used to keep the church doors open. And I slide under the pews and sleep there at night. And then it, and during the day, I used to sit under a tree at the university and chant Hare Krishna all day. And I made Simply Wonderfuls. And that's how I started the prashadam distribution, which is still going on right now. Huh? Gainesville, Florida. Yeah, Gainesville. I started with nothing. And Brahmananda started the Tallahassee Center. And uh, Vishen John, he started the Houston and Austin Centers. And we did this all by ourselves. We had no other person, no money, nothing. We follow Prabhupada in this way. So it can be done. Because if you do it, if you're sincere, then you get empowered by Krishna's representative. He empowers you to open center. If you're sincere, and everything will come, just as everything came to Srila Prabhupada. There was no problem. He got men and money. Of course, there's some tribulations, but in life there's always tribulations, even in the material life. So in spiritual life, sometimes there's tribulation, but still we go on with our duty. So this letter is full of instructions that are universal, that can be accepted by everybody. So in this letter, at this time, November 13th, because this uh, Brahmananda's letter was the 12th, Prophet wrote me a letter a letter. I was having, I was married for a short time, for three months, and um, my wife had a disagreement with Prabhupada, and that w was the start of our breakup, when she argued with Prabhupada. So Prabhupada writes a letter, I do not agree with your wife's statement that New York is unfit for human habitation. She wrote that to Prabhupada. A real Krishna conscious person can adjust things nicely, even in hell. Another instruction. A fully Krishna conscious person is always in transcendental position, and he's not afraid of any place which is to be called or unfit for human habitation. A Krishna conscious person is always satisfied whether in Vaikuntha or in hell. His satisfaction is not the particular place, but his sincere service attitude towards Krishna. I have no objection if your wife and you go to San Francisco and live there peacefully as man and wife concentrating your attention on Krishna conscious. So I was going to meet Prabhupada, but she was going f for this. 
because that's the first thing she did. She became a meth head. She was taking methadrine. And she wasn't thinking of Prabhupada, but I was thinking of going to Prabhupada and doing service. And it, it was at that time, I recorded, at that time, they came out with the first battery run uh, tape recorder. There were no battery run tape recorders until 1968. So I purchased the first one and I tied it around my body because it was very heavy with huge batteries. Six huge batteries that were heavy. So it was very heavy. I had to tie the tape recorder around my body and I reported the first morning walks of Prabhupada in March of 1968. It's in the Veda base. There's proof of it. It's mentioned in the Veda base. So I went there to do service. I also recorded the first uh, tapes of Prabhupada chanting the Sanskrit slokas of Srimad Bhagavatam. Those are still available on the, if you get the music of Prabhupada. Yes. They're still available. So another letter came to Brahmananda. We'll read the last letter. On the 15th of November. My dear Brahmananda, I'm in due receipt of your letter dated November 9th, 1967. I have noted the contents very carefully. The Kirtanan incident is certainly very unhappy, and your dealing with the situation is quite appropriate. So here's Prabhupada praising Brahmananda for his leadership qualities in dealing with a situation which was going against Prabhupada's authority but he dealt with it appropriately because he was mature. He had Brahman, He was chosen to be the first president of his con because he had leadership qualities. He was president of his student council in high school. He was captain. He was a junior to all the other uh, players, he, and he was captain of his football team and wrestling team. He even got a, got a, he got a scholarship to Annapolis, military... Uh, school in Maryland, the most prestigious military school in America is uh, is Annapolis, and he got a scholarship based on re uh, wrestling. Lord Chaitanya composed a verse that one should be humble than the straw and more tolerant than the tree for chanting the holy name of Krishna. But the same author, learning the insult committed upon the person of Lord Nityananda, became furious, and the Lord wanted to immediately kill the insulter. The idea is that personally one should be very meek and humble, even in the presence of provocations. But a slight insult to Krishna and his representative should at once be taken seriously and appropriate measures should be taken. So Prabhupada is saying, I, I did the right thing because he insulted Prabhupada by saying that he's going to die, he's not coming back, and we should listen to Kirtananda. And that's when I spit in his face. I thought that would stop him. And it did. He went away. He also had a cape he was wearing a black Catholic uh, suit with the collar and everything. Yeah, just like a Catholic priest. And he had a cape that he would throw around him. And I called him Count Dracula, because that's how he looked. He looked like Count Dracula, you know. And he was sucking the blood of all the devotees to get us away from Prabhupada, you know. And I was only 19 years old. <laughs> we should never tolerate any insult or blasphemy to Krishna or his representative. So your action was quite all right. Because we are in the public eye, we have to act cautiously so that people may not misunderstand. Anyway, forget the chapter. This is another quality of a pure devotee. He doesn't hold grudges. You forget it and go on with your Krishna conscious. Move forward. 
you see? Because we don't want to remember things about Maya. We want to forget Maya and remember things about Krishna and proceed with our personal Krishna consciousness. So forget all the madness and just go on with one's Krishna consciousness, you see. There is nothing to be lamented. If thousands of kirtanans are, are of Hare Griva or Hare Griva come and go, we have to go on prosecute our real program, being sincere to Krishna and Krishna Chaitanya. I am just ready for starting for America. But as you know, our competent, our competent government is very slow in action. The P form was submitted almost a month ago, but still it is going under red tapeism. The visa was granted to me with, within a half hour. The passage money was deposited within two days, but unfortunately the Reserve Bank of India is delaying the matter unnecessarily. This is another thing, is Prabhupada getting the P for. In those days, you couldn't leave India. Nobody could. You had to get permission from the government to leave India. Just imagine. There was no freedom of movement in, in India. It was a communist government or socialist government in those days. You couldn't even buy cement, couldn't buy rice. You had to buy everything through the government. You couldn't buy uh, steel. You had to get permission to buy the steel. For us to build Mayapur and Vrindavan, we went through hell. You, you could buy bricks and sand, but to get cement, steel, you had to get permission from the government first. They had to give you permission to buy the steel directly from the factory. But without the permission, you couldn't buy anything. Even to buy a car, you had to wait in line because the government told the car companies how many cars to make. So Prabhupada, in 1977, Prabhupada wanted three cars. And I went to the dealer and he gave me a paper that said 7,800 or something. I said, oh, that's cheap, 7,800, that's, that's only $1,000, you know, in those days, or $100. Anyway, yeah, $1,000. So he said, no, that's how, the, that's the line you're waiting in. There's 7,800 people waiting in front of you. I go, what? <laughs> How long will that take? Yeah, maybe five years. I said, no, I need money right now. I need that right now. So I went to the factory because I made Mr. Birla a life member who was in charge of the factory. And the factory was in Calcutta. And I put the cash on the table because at that time it only cost about $28,000 for an ambassador car, which is a family car. It's a big car. I put the... For three cars, I put on the table, I want them right now. He said, no problem. <laughs> as, as long as you pay cash, because the black market was like 10 times greater than the white market. So you could get anything in India as long as you paid cash, the black market. So even if you wanted good rice, like Prabhupada loved Govinda Bog rice. It's, it's a very scented rice that only grows in Bengal, and it's diamond-shaped. Diamond? Yeah, it's diamond-shaped. It's not long grain, like basamati. It's called Govinda Bog, and it gets a very low yield, so farmers don't like to grow it. So only temples buy it f for offerings. So the only way to get it is on the black market, and that's where I used to get it for Prabhupada and our deities. So they would have Govinda Bog. It's called Govinda Bog. Mm. So anyway, it's after 12. If there's any questions, yes?
the distributing problems at the airport and the pipeliners were coming down and their wallets would be filled with $100 bills. Benjamin Franklin's on the $100 bill and every time we would hit 100, we'd drive off to Ben <laughs> for <laughs> Benjamin Franklin. And we were passing out mantra cards. There was a military base nearby and many of these boys were very sincere coming to the program and we had a little Sunday feast and we stayed there maybe six months but then we got moved by our Sagraton leader. In that time, it was all about Prabhupada and just having faith. And yeah, it was very easy we in those young. days. We didn't hardly know anything. We but we had the energy. And yeah, we read Bhagavad Gita every mm. day. Mm. Me and Upendra, we opened the Seattle temple. It's still open, you know. And Prabhupada came there, you know, in, in Seattle and stayed for over a month and made many devotees. So anybody can open a center. Just following the program. Just follow the program. Yeah. And Krishna provides all the facilities in due time. You have to have a little patience. Like in every endeavor, there's a patience involved. You know. Yeah. Any other question? Okay. There are a lot of instructions in these letters that can be absorbed in our minds. So we can dwell on them af after we leave here. On these instructions. So, Haribo. Yeah, we're going to publish Brahmananda's letters through Mahadevi. She's doing the book and the editing, and I'm adding some purports. And I did I did six months of interviews on each letter, like I'm explaining now. This is all on tape, so that will be in the book, and you'll be able to get the book and uh, read these early letters of the movement, how the movement progressed. Even though there were so many things go going against us, we still progressed and opened three temples while Prabhupada was out of India. Without his presence, three temples were opened. So, Haribo. Yes. Yeah, we were empowered by Prabhupada because we were sincere in those days. I mean, we gave up the best years of our life for sense gratification. It's when you're 18, 19 years old, up to 30 years old. Those are the best years to enjoy your senses, and we gave them all up for Prabhupada. Yes. So that's a great sacrifice, and Krishna saw that. A sweet sacrifice. Yeah. Okay, so there's Prashadam brought by Nagapati. <clears throat>